all right now we come to the crux the eighth observation is how then how can we reduce desires hold on to the question let me finish this this is an important observation how can we reduce desires then this is a question people will ask this so one can um, discuss this endlessly but a very f a quick observation some things i've collected from here and there how can we reduce desires think upon these four things to reduce desires think upon these four things one is the moment that I have a desire, I have generated a void, an incompleteness, a gap within myself. Does that make sense? Apurnatvam in Sanskrit. I have consciously agreed to, I am not complete anymore. It happens without thinking about it. I just feel this lack. But this lack is not, it did not come by itself. Behind this it is a, it is a desire. And that, that desire, I have control over it. I have assented to it. Often, you say, nobody asked me to sign. When, when did I sign uh, for the desire? It, it happened by default. We, we see an advertisement, and this is nice. Uh, Friday sale, no? Black Friday sale. <laughs> it was not there earlier. The advertisement is there and it creates a desire in my mind, oh some nice things will be there. I must go and queue up and stand in, in a long, long queue. <laughs> An incompleteness, apurnatvam is generated in me. That's, remember, that's one first, the first thing to remember is that. And the second thing to remember is that um, one becomes, one loses independence. We are basically going around with a begging bowl to the world, make me happy, make me happy, make me happy. Yeah. We lose independence. Every time, every desire that I have, I lose independence. Is it worth it? We think it's worth it. Never is. Till now it has not been. In everybody's life. So we lose independence. Swami Vivekananda put it this way, slave to a good word, slave to a bad word, in everything. Somewhere I want praise from people, I become a slave to it. I react with anger and uh, unhappiness when somebody criticizes me. Again a slave to it. I lose independence. So in modern uh, psychology, there is a, there's something called Cognitive behavior therapy. Uh, um, earlier it was called rational emotive behavior therapy, REBT. So there they say uh, we have, if you actually write down the assumptions behind our desires, our demands, it looks so silly. I get upset because somebody said a nasty word to me. You know what's the, why did I get upset? The, what is the assumption behind that becoming ups, upset? The assumption is this, if, you, if I write it down, nobody ever should be nasty to me. That's the assumption. If you write it down, that's so silly. Nobody ever should say a bad word to me. Why? <laughs> How is that even possible? If I write it down, it seems silly, but it's unexpressed way it is there as a seed behind in, in my mind. That's why I get so upset. So the second thing is I lose my independence. Think about this. The third thing to think about is Desires, if they are not fulfilled, will lead to frustration and unhappiness. Simple fact, but a big source of unhappiness in our lives. If my desires are not fulfilled, it will lead to unhappiness. The moment I sign up for a desire, I am signing up for unhappiness. Because most desires, in some way or the other, will remain unfulfilled. Or we will get frustrated at some turn or the other. So it, it leads to unhappiness. Frustration. Unfulfilled desires lead to frustration and unhappiness. Think about that. And uh, the last thing of course is, the fourth thing to think about is, when you cultivate desires, they keep on increasing. There is no end to what are called vasanas, the, the uh, impressions in our mind which generate desires. The more we try to satisfy them, the more they spread and proliferate. 
in uh, Hindu mythology we have the story of Yayati, the king who uh, wanted to enjoy all sorts of sensuous pleasures, pleasures in life, then became old and sick and couldn't do so anymore. And then he made a kind of Faustian deal with his son, that you are a dutiful son. The prince said, yes, give me your youth. You become old for some time. I want to enjoy more. And then again, so he went on in, uh, enjoying the pleasures of uh, life uh, in that young body for decades and decades till he realized that there is no way you can come to an end of, um, uh, you know, g get satisfaction out of um, by sensuous pleasure, pleasures. He says, just like at a fire, you, for, you pour ghee. Ghee is the clarified butter in, in Vedic sacrifices in ancient India, that was the offering they did. But the more you pour into it, the more the fire blazes forth. You can't put out a fire by pouring fuel into the fire. So satisfying desires is like that. Trying to get satisfaction by fulfilling desires is like that. You're just making the fire burn brighter. Um, we always think, one more thing and then I'm done. We think that. You know, just, I have just a few things I want, then I'm set for life. I really don't have any more big things after that. No, we do. <laughs> There's no end to it. A very touching story of a Buddhist monk. He was an Englishman. He became a Buddhist monk. And uh, he writes this story. He says, when I was a little kid, um, my mom was a, s a single parent, so she struggled to bring us up. And we didn't have much money. So every day in the village, I would go, to go home from school and walk home and pass the store, a shop. And I would longingly look at the things. And I knew we were poor. We didn't have the money. But once, there was this very nice toy car. And so he said, I just used to stand there at the store and look at it longingly. And I would go and nag my mother for it. But I knew there was no chance because we were poor. One day I was walking past the store and the car was no longer there. Somebody had obviously bought it. And I sadly thought maybe some other kid has got it. When I went home, I saw that my mother had bought it for my birthday. And she had put it there. The thing is, the catch is this, I had been nagging my mother all the time saying, Mom, buy me that thing and I'll never ever ask you for anything in my life. <laughs> never ever ask you for anything in my life. So when my mom gave it to me and she said, remember your promise, never ever anything in your life. <laughs> and of course, I was delighted, I played with it, but just as it happens with every kid, they played with it for a few weeks, then maybe once in a week and then it, one of the wheels came off and my mother never threw it away. She put it on top of an almirah, it stayed there collecting dust. But whenever, as I grew up, I asked for something, she would point to that, that <laughs> and I knew what she, what she meant. And then he writes, it's so touching that he became a Buddhist monk later on. And he said he has come back because his mother passed away. And uh, her, his mother, in, the, in this, uh, uh, the ceremony, when the, mother's, the coffin is going to be buried, he got that toy and he put it in his mother's coffin. <laughs> it was a great lesson that my mother taught me. There is no end to this. Never ever. This is not the way to satisfaction. So remember these things when trying to reduce desire. Will it work? It helps <laughs> to remember these things. <laughs>